gonna be looking at the 2014 movie called Animal. This movie was weird, but it wasn't the worst movie I've seen. I don't know if you want to call that a compliment. But one of the first things I noticed was the stupid roaring sound that the T-Rexes from The Land Before Time used as well. expect too much from this because I think these were around the same time they were all using the same sound effects for like every single monster in existence. So you know, like why would this be any better? Anyway, we start off with a group of people running for their lives. This girl ends up falling down and she's like, oh my god! Fallen! Something is clearly chasing them, and it's something that, you know, is not normal. So then it grabs her, and the guy's like, no, baby! And blood is splurting everywhere as she is getting feasted on, and he wants to save her, and he stops momentarily because he's like, oh my god, what is happening? I see blood squirting everywhere, but let me take a pause before I come save you. And then he goes to get her, but then they try to prevent him from doing it, and he knocks him out of the way. And you know, that, 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 the few seconds that he would have had, had they not interfered and tried to stop him from saving his wife, he would have been able to say at least a goodbye to her. Note to self, if someone wants to go and save their significant other, just let them. Just let them. I understand you want to save that person, but that person, it's their life, and they should decide what they do with it. Especially when it comes to saving somebody that they love. Oh my god, I wish that I was in a situation. I wish I was in a situation. Not really. But if there was ever a situation where my significant other was in trouble and people tried to stop me from saving him, I would clock them in the face. And I would grab and twist their, their, their tender parts. You cannot stop me from saving the person that I love. Even if it's a lost cause, any of you would have done the same. You mean to tell me that if your child was in danger of getting eaten by this thing, even if they're dead, it means a lot to hold them for the last moments of their life so they don't die alone. If your child was in that situation, you would just let this thing eat it? Animal. Animal, pura sangre muscular. Anyway, the movie starts off with some people in an old SUV traveling to this cabin or place forest. We get the main characters, Jeff, the one who's driving, who's responsible for this trip, his girlfriend sleeping in the passenger seat, Mandy. Oh, Sean, the fifth wheel, and Matt and Alyssa. I knew this guy looked familiar when I saw him. I was like, who? I know his face. Is he the Peter Pan guy from that movie that my mom made me watch? I remember when I first saw this, the character that he was playing was older than me, and I had like this massive crush on him, and then it kind of went away every time he laughed. Anyway, that was such a great movie, by the way. I have no idea why it didn't get more traction. I guess because Lord of the Rings Return of the King came out around like six months to the release of that movie. Not a very smart move, if you ask me, but whatever. I guess Peter Pan had to grow up. Alyssa and her brother Jeff notice that the road is closed and the path they want to go down. Seeing the notice, Jeff is very upset because this forest has always been here. It's the one that his father used to take him and his sister out camping. And this girl's like, oh, it's so cute that you're mad about this. Oh, this is the place you're telling me about? Might as well be the same. Hmm, I guess Peter Pan found his Wendy. We used to camp here every summer. So it was their one thing they used to do every summer with their dad. It's their whole family tradition. And Peter Pan just wants to get into her Peter Pan pants. Sorry. He's like, so Wendy, I mean, uh, Alyssa, so um, if like I do really well, will your folks, meaning your brother, like me? And then at that very moment, her brother comes in. Your brother? I wouldn't count on it. All right. What do you think? Close enough? He's not exactly mean to Peter, but he's definitely, I keep calling him Peter, Matt. <laughs> He's definitely the more alpha type of person who's like, um, excuse me, get out my way. <laughs> Sorry, that was a danky ass laugh. <laughs> I was trying to take a breath while... Anyway, moving on. He definitely isn't used to outdoors life. It doesn't seem as though Mandy is either. Mandy is Alyssa's best friend, the girl who's dating her brother. I love Sean, by the way. Like, he does such a great job with the acting in this. Most of them aren't horrible. This is the worst movie I've watched. But he definitely makes it interesting. And I just kept thinking to myself, okay, so we've got Alyssa and her brother Jeff and Alyssa's boyfriend Matt and her... Uh, Mandy, the only part that counts. And I'm thinking to myself, man, this guy is like the fifth wheel. Because <laughs> everybody else has a couple. He's the only one that tags along. And it just feels like, okay, while everyone's snuggling up together, I'm the only one that's lying down like a loser. Who probably is like a boyfriend or girlfriend back at home. But I'm just sitting here like, okay. And then as soon as that thought enters my mind, he says this. Two, everyone say fifth wheel. Fifth, fifth wheel. wheel. 
Oh, I love it. <laughs> I took the thought right out of my mind. You know, there's a theme for these types of horror movies. Whenever people are about to go into a dangerous area, like they're spelunking or they're hiking, everyone always takes a group picture before they go. I don't know if it's some kind of traditional thing, just in case you don't make it back. But it's like, dude, okay, I guess no phones, so they take the picture before they're heading off on their journey. But it usually ends up being their last picture. I've watched enough Mr. Ballin videos to notice. So there's pretty music playing as they hike over the scene. Arah. Jeff and Mandy are talking and having fun. Well, it looks like Jeff's having fun. Girl, listen. I know that the girls need to breathe, but if I was out there where there are mosquitoes and shit, the one place I am going to make sure I don't get bitten is on my booty, my boobs, and my face if I can help it. You know how attractive it is? You already have a whole bunch of mini breasts on your breasts and you're scratching at them and like opening up your shirt so you could try. It makes you look dirty. I hate it. She's brave. And even Alyssa, her friend is like, dude, we're hiking. She's like, you always have to look good because people talk, you know, social media. And she cares about how she looks on social media. Meanwhile, she's gonna get eaten up by bugs because I would not be spraying deep anywhere near my mammary gland, sorry. As they're passing by having fun, there's carrion of what looks like a dead wolf. It is gored pretty badly. Its jaw is dislocated. It just looks disgusting. Then the argument happens. Brother and sister are like, listen, we, we, we need to do this. No, we need to do this. And he's trying to tell his sister, sis, I got this. And she's like, dude, we need to find camp. We don't want to be hiking in the dark. And he's like, come on, we've been out later with dad before. And I'm guessing the only reason they've been out that late with their father is because their father was with them and he is way more experienced or because they had no choice. If you're trying to be safe and you have a whole bunch of people with you, the best thing to do is to try and camp before, you know, so you're not hiking in the dark. But the brother is like, no, trust me, sis, I got this. They just keep arguing because both of them have very stubborn personalities. I'm pretty sure they're wasting precious time. Damn, look at Peter Pan though. Like, bro, Neverland couldn't hold you, could it? Like Mandy sitting next to him looks like a throw blanket sitting next to a comforter. Should I leave that in? What is a better way? Never mind. Matt, Peter Pan, whatever, goes to take Leek. And he's like, yeah, and all these freaking eight inches of freaking sordom. It's so super hard to take them out. It's, sorry, not them. <laughs> anyway, he's like, suck my blood. There's a military bag and he's like, or a marine bag. He's like, what the hell happened here? Whose bag is this? Then he hears some Wendigo stick munching in the woods and he's like, oh, everything's fine. Oh. I screamed too. I, I legit screamed out a little bit when he did that because it was so unnecessary. Why would you do that? He was trying to scare that poor person. Sean and Matt both admit that it's kind of weird. Guess what ends up happening? The very same thing that the sister told Jeff was going to happen. But I can't help but think that because both of them sat there arguing, it ended up being nighttime before they went anywhere. Of course, Mandy takes her best friend's side instead of her boyfriend's side because she's like, you only care about you. And he's like, I made a mistake. Hey, what? I'm going to slap the shit out of you. No one needs to say another word. All anyone should be doing is getting us the hell out of here. <laughs> While the friends are all trying to check about where they're going, Mandy sees something with her phone. She goes closer. It's some uprooted cave made by a, a tree and there's a whole bunch of shoes and weird human clothing around. I don't know why I say human clothing because, you know, animals that are not humans don't tend to wear clothes, but you know exactly what I mean. So she looks inside of it and screams bloody murder because she sees human flesh and intestines and she's like, oh my god, no! Mandy! Okay, I will give them that. <laughs> I will give them that human scream. I don't know what sound effect that was or she actually made it. Very good, because I can't, I can't take it when in these movies, people are screaming out of sheer fear and their scream is like, ah! Ah! No, like, dude, when you're screaming out of fear, like the only reason in my stories I don't scream like that is because I have neighbors and they're gonna call the cops on my partner. <laughs> because they're immediately gonna think he's doing something because he's the dude. So I have to kind of like either narrate that my character is screaming or use a sound effect that's not me. Because if I really scream the way I'd want to scream and make it sound like my character is screaming, people would get worried. They think that there was a murder going on. That's how you're supposed to do this. I can't wait till I get a sound booth and I can actually do that. Or a closet that is like a closet and has insulation like I did at my parents' house. I do miss that walk-in closet. That was very nice. Off the rails. I know, I'm sorry. But that was excellent. I think now they're realizing, oh, there's something dangerous out here that had, yeah, okay. But not only do they see the remains of something scary having massacred something else, but they hear it reply in kind after that girl screams out. I thought you said there was nothing out here. <laughs> 
Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. So they all run and they're like, okay, we gotta try and find someplace safe. And they end up running directly into one of these things that I'm guessing the movie is calling animal because no one knows what the hell it is and it's never explained and it's totally fine. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff has the right idea. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the scene from out of Jurassic Park 3. It's okay, it's dead. She is scared. I'm gonna scare it. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna scare it. <laughs> I can't blame him because. <laughs> so you gonna do? You can't outrun it clearly. And like, you know, if it's a wolf or a bear, it's more scared of you than you're scared of it, right? And then this whole interaction is hilarious. I was cracking up. <laughs> I love how the thing is like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> and then it makes this call that sounds eerily like the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> Seems as though that weird noise is usually what animals do when they're calling for someone else, at least in these movies. Before, Sean had asked Jeff if the bear spray actually worked. And I thought that he was going to take out the bear spray and just try it, but nobody ever thought about that. I guess they weren't expecting to see the skull head looking dude standing before them that looks kind of like a bear and a man at the same time. They're all just trying to survive. They happen to see a cabin or at least some kind of wood log house. Jeff tells his sister and his girlfriend and the others that he's going to try and distract the creature. I'm going to run along the tree line. I'm going to distract it and I'm going to meet you there. Okay? I'm thinking to myself, man, this is a real leader, but I think the reason why he's like this is because he has more at stake. Not only is his sister here, but he also has his girlfriend here. That's just his personality. He just protects those that he loves. So while everybody heads for the house, he'll stay back and be the hero. Oh. That didn't take very long. <laughs> It's not funny, I feel bad, because I do like his character. Not that we know him particularly, but I know him through the main character, who's the sister. So, I know how much she loves her brother. And they were just fighting, you know, I'm sure they made up and stuff, it's just sibling stuff. But seeing him say that, and then the thing is able to sneak up on them like that, that's freaking terrifying. Oh. <laughs> it's just sitting there like... I'm gonna wait in the dark until you turn around. Why does it look like that? It looks like some horrible bioengineered situation going on here. <laughs> so it mauls him right in front of his sister who can't do anything. His sister and his girlfriend have to watch as he literally sacrifices himself for them. The boys pull them away and they beg for people to open the door and the doors and the windows are all boarded up in this house. <laughs> God. That's why I say Sean is the best actor. The guy who plays Sean, best actor out of all of them, because he, the way he he portrays fear, even when he's crying and stuff, I believe him more than I believe Mandy and even the other main character. I really like him. He's one of the only ones, him and the girlfriend and the main character, I want them to survive. Peter Pan, I don't really care. And Alyssa, she, Kiki Palmer, she does a great job with this part as well. I'm sure they wet their faces with some water or oil or whatever. And when she sees the creature, she's not doing so well. She's like, I just saw my brother killed, but I'm whatever, you know. And then she sees the monster coming through the trees. <laughs> and the way she acts, this, this part was actually pretty good. <laughs> So that reaction right there, <laughs> she's like crying and you can like that, that is the, that is the epitome of an expression of one wetting themselves. It was very well done. And Sean is acting, he's acting his ass off. Look at the freaking veins. His freaking neck veins have neck veins. It's freaking weird, dude. <laughs> his whole head looks like a dick. Like th that's how you know you're giving it your all. They are pulled in by the people inside and Mandy is grabbed momentarily, but she's fine. She is so lucky. Don't know why I didn't choose to take a chomp down on her like it did her boyfriend, but whatever. So this guy and his wife, who sounds like the bride of Chucky, take these people in and it's discovered later that they were actually the first group that we saw in the beginning. The other guy that lives upstairs, named Douglas, is the one we saw trying to save his wife. But it's very clear that Douglas doesn't care about anybody else after his wife died. It just took away all humanity that he probably had left and now he doesn't care about people. 
he just wants to die or wants to survive so much that he throw everybody else under the bus. I really like this character and it's another one that I really hoped wouldn't die which means that he's probably going to die. His name is Carl and his wife's name is Vicky. There were more of them and they've been here for a while. Sean already had called the Rangers and they were sending somebody out. Everyone has been trying their best to keep the doors and the windows barricaded because this thing always tries to find weaknesses to get inside. So now that they have more hands, they can help make the place more secure. So with Alyssa being like the smartest person out of all of them and yada yada besides her brother, she's like, dude, this thing herded us here. It all wants us here. It's not a coincidence so we all ended up here and it stopped us from running in other directions and Peter sorry Matt is like don't think too much about it baby and the whole time I'm screaming pulling my jawline out because they're standing right by the window why is it in these movies people always have to have these speeches right by the window maybe this was the movie makers version of trying to get us to feel suspense and anxiety it's working because it makes no logical sense like knowing that this thing tracks you by sound, especially considering that when you came in, the people who were in the house before them, Carl, Vicky, and Doug were like telling them to be quiet. Why would you be standing right by the window, a place where sound can travel very well, talking? I'm being completely rational. Ed, You're it, not even listening Look to me. at me, it's just an animal. Says this person standing by the window that literally has human handprints being dragged out of the window right next to them. House is pretty big. You mean to tell me there's nowhere else in this entire house, in this entire abode where they can hunker down and talk in private without being right by the freaking window? They always say, if, if you can't control- <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> my, that's my point exactly. Just my point exactly. But nobody listens. Get the door. I have a feeling if the thing really wanted to be in there, it would have gotten in there. I don't know what the deal is. Why all of a sudden with how it's so strong and able to fell trees and all that, it can't remove a bunch of two by fours. It just doesn't make any sense. But you know, we gotta make the characters feel like they're doing something. <laughs> it's like, oh crap, I can't get in. What has happened? Oh well. It goes around the house looking for ways to get in. Even though, you know, really? <laughs> this movie's hilarious. Look, look at all the space. That you can't, really bro? Did they? Okay, I'm so confused. I would have at least stuffed some blankets, but no, they leave this big old gap open. What logical sense does it make to leave this big ass hole open that the creature could just bite through this? No, no, it's not even that. You could just, look. Well, these are little nails hanging in. The creature just has to ram his head one time and realize I can get in. Just a little bit of leverage. The freaking... There are big dogs and even horses that can get through this. I have seen horse. I used to, I used to horse it, babysit horses, whatever. And at the ranch, we had this big draft horse. And Huey was like a two-year-old, but he's pretty big. He's like 2,000 pounds. I'm pretty sure the animal out there is like 1,500 pounds based on the way it looks and how heavy it is. And Huey, whenever he saw me, he would get very happy and do this thing with his hooves where he would beat the metal fence because he wants my attention and he wants me to come and give him a massage and feed him and dote on him. And do you know that that metal fence, the first time he struck it, it got a big old dent in it. This is the kind of gate I'm talking about. And this was nothing for the horse to bend. These things are made of metal. They're made of very thick metal. And a horse can bend that if it puts enough force. Huey's owner taught me how to correct the behavior so he wouldn't do that because those gates are freaking expensive and he stopped doing it. But that's just a horse that's being needy just using one of his front legs to kick open that gate and to bend it. Imagine a piece of board, one little tiny piece of board against an animal that's about 1,500 pounds that really wants to get in is ravenous and very aggressive with these things and massacres people like they're nothing, wanting to get inside. It either doesn't want to get in yet or it's toying with them because clearly this little piece of fly swatting wood would not be enough to keep that thing out. Just this job, like I don't even understand. I mean, I get spacing them out, but... <laughs> Wouldn't the wood be better together? Look at this huge gap right here. Its head can fit through and it just has to lift itself up and then, oh God, these people are asking to die. And then you put the chairs up there and for, what are they supposed to do? What are these, why are these chairs here? Why are they upside down? What exactly are they supposed to do? It would have made more sense for you to break the chair up into smaller pieces and use that to barricade the window even more. You know, with ropes and stuff, like, it doesn't make any sense to me. You're not trying to keep out a dog or wolves. You're trying to 
keep out something that looks like a freaking dinosaur. It's just so stupid the way they're all waiting there like, look, look at all the wood we have around the house. The entire house is made of wood, but yet you have no more wood to put in front of the windows. What is wrong with you people? On. Don't tell me. I know. I know damn well you guys have more nails than that. I know you do because d d later on you're using a whole whole lot more. What what is holding up this wood end right here? Okay, let's say there's a nail that you use one one nail one nail one nail one nail. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'm not a construction person, but for me personally, if I knew there was a big demonic Beelzebub looking bear what incarnation type of creature outside. I would be using a whole lot more nails. Anything that's left over, I'm gonna use them and reuse them. I know they're like, well, we should use what we have. I mean, you have doors throughout the house. It's life and death. I would have taken some of the doors off the bedrooms because you're literally trying to survive and brace the doors up against these windows and put something heavy up against it. They still have heavy stuff. They keep saying, we don't have stuff. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Number one, you have longer wood planks that are making up pieces of the house that you don't need. They have stuff. Trust me, they do. But this is the job they're doing. I know I'm spending a lot of time talking about this, but I have to point it out because if we're entering a situation where something like this is happening, this isn't going to save you. This job right here that they did, like someone stacking Legos, Legos are, are a better deal than this because you can't even pull them apart. This all you gotta do is take your knee or take your hand, basically. I've I've done this where there's freaking one nail in and one nail in here and you just do a yaw with the palm of your hand and the thing comes flying out. Much less what this creature, this creature just has to breathe or fart on this wood plank and it will come apart. This whole house will blow down. <laughs> with the poor shoddy job they've done with barricading. So now it sounds like it's in the attic, so they go up to investigate. Matt goes with Carl, and Sean goes with them. They've tried to barricade as, I guess, best as these people can, even though there's a whole bunch of other stuff lying around that they could have used. Excuse me? I'm sorry. Hold on. I know, I'm picky as hell about this. I'm sorry. We have nothing to use to barricade. I'm sorry. Is this not a big-ass dresser? Like, this big bookshelf-looking... What? What? What, look as it pans. Look, okay, we have that stuff against the window and then the rest of the house. And then this big old bookshelf that's literally doing nothing. That would have made a great, great object to barricade. Just the Darwin Award with these people. I, I can't. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know how it got in. First of all, why is that door open? If it's going to be open, why didn't you use it to barricade the place? But if you're not, why is it, why is it not Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> the thing is so strong that it takes three people to try and hold the door in place and it's not working. And this is why I think it's bullshit. First of all, they're like, go get that thing over there that we should have used from the get-go to barricade. Oh, look at all the stuff in the room. These people clearly told the new people we have nothing else to barricade with. What is this? What is this finding point click adventure? Look at all the things you could be using. You could have used the very thing that you're telling them to go in and get to barricade the door in the first place. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. And then this is the point I'm trying to make, right? This is, this is the point I'm trying to make. They're using those stupid little pieces of planks. Look exactly at what happens here, which cannot be the first thing that happens because it is not the first time that this thing has bro uh, broken through the house. We've seen scratches and blood prints everywhere else. Curtains are torn. This thing has broken through several times, which caused these people to barricade the place in the first place. They're using those tiny little flat wooden pieces. Look at what the thing does to the big, much thicker door, mind you, than what they have barricading the windows downstairs. <laughs> With its hand, it tears through the door to get to them because, you know, that thick ass door that's thicker than a lot of the wood they're using to barricade the place is like paper to this piece of shit thing. But yet they use one nail. Okay, so you, you, you see where I'm going with this anyway. And I guess, <laughs> I guess these two girls don't know the concept of adrenaline because they're trying to move this thing. I don't know why they're lifting it. I don't know why they're, one is lifting and, and, and pulling and the other one is lifting and pushing. What are they doing? What? <laughs> so freaking stupid. Where is your adrenaline? The two of them are like, let's do this. This dresser's super heavy. We can't move it. Go on the, okay. 
go on the other side, the both of you, and push it. You're not trying to keep it from being messed up. You don't care about the dresser. And a faster way would have been to tumble it. I have carried up boxes because I live on the second floor of my building. I've carried up boxes that had freaking exercise equipment in them. Heavy as shit. And I was too lazy because I'm like, you know what? I don't want to have to put them in the first floor and unpack them and then make 16 trips. I just don't want to because I have things I have things to do. So I, while I was asleep, I went behind the box on the bottom of the stairs with the box facing up the stairs. And you know what I did? I tumbled it. So I pushed one side of the box exactly the way that they're doing it now, pushed it so that the box fell on its side and then I would push that side and then roll it and slide it back up the stairs. Me, my little five foot three tiny self did that. And these two bitches cannot use, I'm, I'm betting that thing weighs as much as that box did. Maybe a little bit more, but there's two of them. It's flat ground. Push it or tumble it. Dude, what? Adrenaline? Hello? So the guy's like, let me help you. And the squid, look at, I mean, seriously, seriously, these people are freaking stupid. It gets on my nerves. Sean is like, I got something to do. Uh, I, I, I got something to do. I'll help you guys out. This bitch. <laughs> The bear spray that they could have used earlier that Jeff said works on bears clearly works on this thing, but they never use it again, like ever. Why? I I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Sean is like, people said they were coming though, guys. And the one Douglas guy who's like nihilistic now was like, nope, nobody's coming. We're all hope is lost. We just need something to distract it because the creature slows down when it eats, which clearly isn't the case because right after it kills something, it goes straight after the others. So I don't know where they got that theory from. Matt is like, I have to do something. I must because I love you and I want to sacrifice myself. Carl was like, look, I'm not afraid of that thing anymore because I've spent my whole time running from it. I want to help. I just want everyone to get home. He is a better person than that other guy. And as a matter of fact, he's a bit like Jeff, the one that got killed. I'm going to keep on saying it. I'm going to keep on saying it. Look when Carl was looking out the window. Look at how thin this piece of wood is with one nail holding it in. Much less that thick ass door that's like three times as thick as this thing. And that monster went through it like no problem. You really expect me to believe? Come on. It wasn't checking for weaknesses. It's toying with you. Or this is just badly written. So he's like, I'll run as fast as I can. Carl's idea is to distract the thing to give Matt a chance to run. And Sean's job is to have the walkie talkie so that he can bravely try to locate where the creature is to let Carl know while he has a flare if the creature is upon him. Carl has a flare, like a scene from out of Jurassic Park with the flare and he waits for Sean to tell him where the monster is. I can imagine what it's like for Vicky, her husband's out there, and how it was gonna be for Alyssa because her last family member is basically her boyfriend that really isn't blood. So Sean spots the monster but Carl can't see it. He's like, where is it? And Sean's like, it's right there in front of you. So since Carl can't see it, he baits it. The suspense is done very well here, and I'm thinking it's gonna get Carl. This looks like a poster from Out of the Thing. I don't know why, but it just put me in mind of it with all the, the glowing lights behind him. So Matt is like, I love you too, babe. And she's like, be careful. Soon as he gets out, he runs since they have eyes on the creature. And we think that Carl is finally gonna see it. After all, he heard something in the bushes only moments ago, and then something horrible happens. They're screaming. The rest of the group inside in suspense and anxiety, knowing that someone has gotten hurt, and it most likely was Carl or Sean because Carl is out here with the flare. Sean is out there with his walkie talkie. One of them is going to get caught, but it's neither of them. What is it? What's going on? Matt. Matt. That thing went directly after Matt and not after Carl and Sean. Carl and Sean run back. They're like, it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't take the bait. As a matter of fact, it's so intelligent. It knew to go after Matt. So let's head back to the house. And this asshole Douglas is like, no, we can't let them in, even though there's enough space to uh, and time to let them in. The monster isn't upon them yet. He's like, we can't let the monster in here. And you'd think that... Because their friends are outside, these other two nincompoop freaking bonobo people back there would be like, you know what, let us help. All three of us, I know we're girls and this guy's much stronger than us, but at least it will give us some time 
to distract him so that the others can get in. And this is the only person who's kind of fighting him. He's like, I'll kill all of you, I'll bash your heads in if you don't, you know, whatever. And Vicky's the only one fighting this guy. And Sean is losing his shit. He's like, let us in. And Douglas is like, I can't. And Vicky's like, my husband's out there. Like, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. If my husband was out there and this asshole was telling me, no, you can't go out there and help him. And the monster's nowhere in sight. I would get a knife or the closest object and I would kill him. I am so sorry, but that's exactly what I would do. You mean to tell me, like, the monster isn't right there. The monster is all the way back there. It's currently munching on Matt. And now it's coming after them. You, all you have to do is step aside like you did for everybody else, let them in and barricade it back. They didn't even have to do that. They just closed back the door and they were fine. But he's gonna sacrifice two people and he's like, this is the best way for us to survive. I would think that you would want as many people in there with you so that the monster has more bait. You know, it doesn't make any sense in a situation like this where you're gonna be so totally selfish when you're literally depending on other people dying for you to get out of a situation. As horrible as that sounds, for someone like him, if his logic is it's only me that's important and I need to survive, then why wouldn't you have as many people on your team as possible? You have the only other two males out there that could help you worth a damn because those two girls that were trying to move the furniture weren't doing jack and you want to kill them off? Why are those idiots not helping her? Why are they not helping her? What the hell is wrong with them? Your friend Sean is out there. What are you doing? Oh my god. I, I remember watching this for the first time and I was screaming my ass off. I really wanted to turn it off. I, 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 I... I... I wanted to see what happened, but good grief, man. It made no sense, especially for Alyssa to sit there or stand there screaming, what are you doing? Help her, you freaking tobacco head. Help your friend. Once open his fucking door. Die! Die! Make it! They did this to build suspense, but it was poorly done. Very poorly done, because the the main character would not have just stood there and let her friend be eaten because this dumbass stranger is like, I can't let him in, you know. I mean, I gotta make this hard decisions that nobody else here wants to make. Vicky says, hey, the kitchen door will open the kitchen door for you. <laughs> so they managed to get in because Alyssa went and let them in through the other place. Well. They did exactly what Douglas wanted. They didn't open that door, but they opened another one. And Sean's acting here is so phenomenal. I, I, I know I keep on saying that. I know I keep on praising him. But usually with these types of movies, getting pers people with good acting skills seems very rare. It doesn't seem like they were trying to launder any money with this movie. It seems like they were legitimately trying to make a good movie. And they cast at Sean correctly. He is wonderful with his role. <laughs> Poor thing. I actually believe he was scared. I don't believe she was scared. She looks like, oh my god, I saw my brother killed in front of me, but I'm a total okay. If you were just to come in and watch the movie after her brother got killed, you would have never, you would never thought that there was even another person unless they brought it up, which they do, but she acts like her brother wasn't killed. Mandy does a better job acting as though her boyfriend was killed. She kind of looks dead and out of it. And I know they're trying to survive and people have different way of doing things. She doesn't have the time to mourn because, you know, things are what they are. Her brother probably would have done the same thing, but it doesn't feel as though there was anything happening to her. It feels like it's a Tuesday afternoon and they're like, oh shit, we have a final today. What are we gonna do? Okay, guys, this is what we're gonna do, all right? We're gonna study. And that's just how she comes across. The only time I ever saw any real emotion on her was at the beginning where I showed you she was screaming and she was like, oh shit, when she saw the thing coming and that was it. Oh shit, girl, thank God. So that's what his ass gets. And he had the nerve to laugh and like, oh shit, Carl. After you tried to kill me, bro. So they tie him up because he's a stupid asshole traitor. And he's like, my blood is on your hands if anything happens to me, really, bitch? When you literally left two people out there to die when the monster was nowhere in sight. And then Carl's like, dude, I'm going to go investigate this thing. Do you want to come with me? You can either stay tied up there or come with me. And of course, the guy stays quiet because he'd rather stay tied up there because he's a freaking coward. I can't help but look at every room they're in and see all the things they could have used to barricade the windows and doors. Mandy then tells her best friend that she's pregnant with Jeff's baby. The two friends walk in and Sean isn't doing so well. Sean is the only person who acts like he's actually in a situation situation where he's afraid and he's stressed out. What's the name of that song that David Bowie and Freddie Mercury sing? It's like famous duet. <laughs> Their faces. They're like, 
what is going on right now? And he just goes into this whole monologue like a scared person probably would. And he's like, you know, you just start thinking about stupid stuff. Like, what's the last song that I heard? Because am I going to die? And that's the last song I'm going to hear. And the whole time he's doing this, I'm screaming out, you know it. Get away from the window. He's right by the window. Why do they do this? You, you were just at death's door. He said he had to fight for his death. And I like what he says here. Because in the most movies, no one ever really points this out. I had to run for my life twice tonight. Like, that's twice more than anyone will ever have to do, like, in their entire lives. And he's the only person here. Good grief. I don't know if this was him coming up with this on the fly. But oh my god. He's good. I believe him. I believe him. I don't believe the others. I believe him. I be Out of all the people starring in this movie, he is the only person who has the most believable dialogue, behavior, mannerisms after being chased by something. Not just by something familiar, like a bear or a dog. By some completely alien, demonic organism that nobody ever knew existed and has no idea what the hell it is. Something that doesn't even act like an animal, which is kind of ironic because the title of this movie is Animal, which this thing is far from. But despite how realistic his character is, it still makes no sense to me why he will be talking about all of this while he's standing by the motherfucking window. Why by the window? Why are you doing that? Why is your back turned to the window, dude? Did you not see Deep Blue Sea? What is wrong with you people? You almost died two times, as you said. You seen this thing try for the windows, yet you are standing right by the window. Oh my god. I need some water. Have to die with. Sean, you're not gonna die. So Sean starts to remember secrets that he's holding right now. Can you guess what one of the secrets are? Because I know it has something to do with the friends. I was in love with Jeff. So everyone's like, okay, so you had a crush on my boyfriend, who cares? Why would you bring that up now, bro? It's, it's dumb, you had a gay crush on my boyfriend. Nobody cares. And I think Mandy, in the back of her mind, probably with her women intuition, knows where he's going with this, but doesn't want him to finish because she keeps trying everything to get him to shut up. And he is like, no, it wasn't one-sided. And then she's like, why do you want me to talk about that now? Like, I can completely understand where she's coming from. I can understand where he's coming from because he's like, listen, and just in case I die, I think I owe them the truth. Don't know what good that would do, but to get it off his chest, it's a secret that he has, and he didn't want to have it anymore. It's not like Jeff is going to say anything. And then I'm thinking to myself, you know, if Jeff was still, like, like why'd you wait till he died, though? Like, okay, he's dead, so you don't have to keep the secret anymore, but what if that wasn't the case? But then there's nothing he has to gain from it. I don't know. I, I just, I can't be buried with it. You're not getting buried at all, so let's just drop it, okay? You had a gay crush on my boyfriend. That's fine, okay? He's dead now. And then when she says that, his whole reaction to the whole thing, the whole re like, he really, oh my god, this guy. This guy, he needs to be in more major movies. He is so freaking good. Like, there's this thing that people do, right? And they start to do that, in, like, modern day movies, and I don't know why. They start to act, take people just based on how they look or based on what their orientation is is and that's fine and dandy if it fits the role but if you're doing it just to please people fine i guess but get people who can act this guy can act what is he doing in these movies maybe it's just me but from like his, his reactions his expressions to everything he is really good at what he does and i'm surprised he's not in more movies this is the first time i'm seeing this person okay he's dead now oh my god like how could you even talk like that i don't want to talk at all i want to drop it so does Alyssa, right Poor Sean. And then when she blows up on him, which I understand because she's basically saying, why would you bring that up now? And he's like, I just didn't want to be, you know, buried with this. And it's like, okay, I get it. But then these are the same people who are also like, hey, you were my best friend. You need to be honest with me. And it's kind of sleazy because it's like, dude, you were home wrecking, like sleeping around with her boyfriend behind her back, which was kind of messed up. So not only is she doubly mad because she's pregnant with Jeff's child, she was in love with him and he was cheating on her with her friend and he's dead now. So now she can't even mourn him because now she has to try and fight the feelings being mad at him and betrayed by him and she can't have closure or confront him at all about it. Now you're raising the child of someone who probably didn't even really love you. Asshole. I'm not an asshole. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. You're lying. Why, why, why would I ever lie about this? Then why are you telling me this now? I'm just trying. Why I'm are you telling me now? What am I supposed to do about this? I just so they start fighting. Meantime, I'm thinking, oh my God. 
Window? <laughs> Window? Thing that can bust through solid objects like they're olive oil? I wouldn't be standing next to it and yelling at the top of my lungs, especially considering the last time we were intact inside the house is exactly what people were doing, but I'm just praying like, okay, dude, Sean, what are you... Come on, what are you doing, bro? Get away from the window! But thank goodness he doesn't get eaten. Something else calls their attention. It's the walkie-talkie doing its beepy thing. It's Matt. They hear him on the other end, groaning. When they beep it back, it's coming from someplace in the house. The cellar. They're like, oh my god, he's in there. He's like, you guys can't be serious. And I understand where she's coming from because if he's still alive, you can't just leave him there. Like, if it was my partner, I could not know that he's dying. And there's a chance I could save him. And I'm like, well, he's dead already. And not try to help him. I could not do that. If it was my dog, I could not do that. Hear my dog crying out for me. And I'm like, well, uh, we're just gonna have to hear him cry. I, 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 I couldn't. I couldn't. As much as I want to say the characters are stupid, I would have done the same thing. Yes, I'm that stupid. I would love someone to my own detriment. So Vicky and Carl are arguing because Vicky's like, I'm going with you this time. I'm your wife. I'm going with you. And he's like, no, stop. You're not. And she's like, yes, I am. And I I, I don't blame her because I would do the same thing. And he's like, if I have to worry about you, then I'm not going to be safe. But then you know what that does to us as the wives? We have to stay back if something happens to you, wondering if we had been there with you, if we could have stopped it. Now we have to live with the death of you not being around. Like women lose their, their freaking appeal, I guess, biologically over time. Because when you get to a certain age, you can't have children anymore. What is it like 40 years? 50? What, what age is it? 50? I don't know. You get to a certain age, you can't have kids anymore. The younger, the tighter, the better, the squeezier, the juicier. It's like fruit. Because you know, there's a ripe portion and then when it gets beyond ripe it tastes awful like really awful and there's maggots and anyway there's great companionship but most people aren't looking for that most people are like we want to start a family and spread my seed and then females are like i want to coat things with my juice and, and it's completely normal and it's easier if the guy is alive because he can find someone else if he gets more money you know these freaking modern day people who just use people as atms and some dudes are okay with that i guess so it's easier for him all he has to do is not even worry about looking good. He just has to have some resources and some bitch will want to do him. But women, people will still do them, but they won't necessarily want to stay with them. <laughs> so it's going to be harder for her. And I think this woman is like, what, in her 40s maybe? I can't tell because her voice always sounds like older than she looks. But you leave her behind. Maybe they chose not to have kids, but no one's going to want to really stay with her because they can have someone that's more in their age group. Unless, you know, she gets lucky and it's a couple like this. <laughs> Oh, nah, my dog, my dog. Anyway, point being is, a woman wants to go with you, let her come. It's her life. She gets to take what she does with it. Unless, of course, you have kids, and you're like, you don't want to leave the kids behind with nobody. You know, I would want my dying wish to be that you're alive and with them. I'm sorry, no forest in heaven or hell is going to stop me from going into danger alongside my man so I can help him if he's in danger. And if I'm in danger, I would want him to run away. I know it's selfish of me saying that because, you know, I'm expecting him to be completely different than how I am. But no, I love him so much that I would want to help protect him and I would want him to not save me. Sorry, but he's like, he convinces her. He's like, no, if I have to worry about you, I'm going to get hurt. And she's like, oh, okay. And I can't blame her because that's what he's saying. She wants him to be safe. So if he's saying he's going to be safer with her not being there. And she does a great job with acting the scene as well. Cause you could tell like she's dying inside. Like she feels this is the last time she's gonna see him. No, no, no. Just in case this is the last time I'm gonna see you. I need full tongue. I need to run my fingers through your hair. I want you to run your fingers through mine. Feel my tits, feel everywhere. Let me feel everywhere. Let me feel your bulge. Let me feel your ass. Like if this is the last time I'm gonna see you, I want a 3D body contour memory of your in entire body, your toes, your fingers, your lips, your tongue, your teeth, everything. I wanna feel all of you. I wanna look into your eyes and say I love you because I know that there is a very high chance that if that thing is down there, I'm never gonna see you again. You almost died before, it would be stupid. So at least a long lasting memory I have is holding you and being in your arms. I make it a point that if any of us have to go anywhere, me and my partner, if I'm leaving or he's leaving, I run to him, I hug him, I kiss him, his neck and everywhere because just in case something happens, I want to know that at least I said goodbye. It's so depressing to think about, Jesus Christ. I do the same thing with my dogs. God, this poor woman. So they go downstairs to the cellar. What's the difference between a cellar and a basement? What's the difference between a cellar and a basement? According to Timberwise, 
A basement is the floor of a building which is partly or entirely below ground level. A cellar is a room below ground level in a house that is often only used for storing wine or coal. It is used for a specific purpose. So it's all about the use because it sounds like the same thing to me. More functional and it's structural. Okay, so a true cellar does not have any windows. A basement can have windows. But then if it doesn't, is it a cellar? Oh, there's no emergency exit on the cellars. Do whatever. Anyway, they go into the cellar and they notice fuel. Ooh, that will come in handy later. Because in every single one of these movies, what do they do? They blow the creatures up. So Matt is badly hurt. And since we saw the thing eyeing the walkie-talkie earlier on, I have a feeling it understands that the walkie-talkie links these things together. It's prey. And I was right on the money because they were leading up to it just kind of on the nose with their suspense in this specific scene here because of how everything is just hanging in the balance like we're waiting for something else to happen. And we all know Carla's like, oh, her face, okay, so there's some emotion there, okay. But Carla's like, you guys get out of here. Take the half-eaten person who is gonna die anyway and let me take myself who's filled with wife, sorry, filled with life and has a wife upstairs waiting for me and like kill myself. And Carl does exactly that. He literally just like tackles the thing, understanding completely that he's gonna die. He fights it and he dies, because no one can go up against this thing. So, you know, if I was his wife, I would have been so angry. I would have been so angry and I would have resented those people so much, because... That guy's dying. I know it's not their fault, but I would have been like, nope, try to drag him up and see what happens. But he's trying to protect the girls and trying to protect Matt. And that's just his personality. And it's so freaking stupid because logically you're like, this person's near death. He can't protect them. They can't protect him. So let's take him upstairs so he can die slower. And this is basically the equivalent of what happened in Jurassic Park 3. They seem like they're taking a lot of inspiration from that movie. Which one was made first? But in Jurassic Park 3, the raptors were intelligent enough to maim one of the characters, but leave him alive. When the others hear Mr. Udesky moaning, they're like, he's still alive! And Tia Leone's character, Amanda, goes down to help him. And as soon as she is almost fallen off, the raptors come to grab her neck and she would have died. They set a trap. Soon as the trap is finished and it doesn't work anymore, they kill Udesky. This thing knew exactly what was gonna happen. It followed Matt in, probably helped carry him in here, knowing that he was going to call for help from the others. But is Matt really out of it? Because if he knew the thing was behind him, why would he want his girlfriend to come down there? They get back up and poor Vicky, poor Vicky. Why? Why Why did you do- Oh god. This is so sad. Because on one hand I understand why Alyssa wanted to save him, but the whole thing is ridiculous. While he's dying, he can't even speak. And he dies so well too. Like there's some people who their acting's not the greatest. They're okay, but they're amazing dyers. I know it sounds freaking weird. <laughs> what do you say? He's dying, hon. So the whole plan is Alyssa is so mad that she wants to kill this thing. She just doesn't want to escape. She says she wants to kill it. It killed her brother. It killed her boyfriend or he's dying right now. And he's like, we got to leave someone here to be feasted upon. She's like, no, we lure it into the house. For So far, the barricades have worked. Let's lure it into the house then set it on fire with the fuel cans downstairs and then get out and trap it in here. He actually likes that idea. That is a better idea that she provided than what he had. And he's like, we'll leave your boyfriend there because he's dead anyway. He's just a hunk of meat. He's already dead. He's not going to live. We're not going to get him out of here. He's going to die before that point. Plus, he's dead weight. And realistically, they cannot carry him while trying to outrun that thing. So they untie him because they're like, like, okay, well, let's get the plan into motion. And this part just shocked me. The animal, the monster, <laughs> oh my god, just threw me for a loop. I don't know why I didn't expect this to happen, but it still caught me off guard. The monster is him, by the way. And I feel like there was a better way he could have gone about that. But he's like, there, now we're not wasting time. Now we can use this hunk of flesh and feed the monster with it. Understandably, Alyssa is mad because she's like, you killed him. He's like, dude, he was already dead. What are you doing? <laughs> can you imagine holding your significant other or, okay. 
oh God, I don't want to think about this, but something more close to me, my dogs or my partner. And I'm saying my last goodbyes holding him and I'm not prepared. And someone just goes and freaking walking dead Negan's his face while I'm holding him. Even if we were going to have a funeral, his face is destroyed. Now it was kind of merciful because he was suffering. But at the same time, you took that from me. You didn't even tell me, hey, here's a way to end it. Here's a knife. Drive it through his skull. I can't hold her back. Let me do it in a way that's not going to make me feel like that. Just <sighs> I get it was the quickest way to deal with things, but it was messed up. It was not a very nice way to do it. I don't even know what to say. Now, can we stop acting like children and think like adults? Oh God. Douglas, God damn you! It was so simple! He was dead! <laughs> <sighs> and I get what he's saying. But it's the way that he's coming off. And I know I'm one of those people who is a proponent for people just coming out and being abrupt, especially in this case, and not beating around the bush, but goddamn. I think this is one of the few situations where, you know, what if it was a child? Would you have done that if it was a four-year-old child who was dying? This is someone, it's not some random person. She's actively holding him and he's looking at her and he, yeah, he's dying. If the, he, they had taken him to the hospital right at this moment, he probably would have made it. He probably wouldn't have. He probably has septic blood now. Who knows? Who knows what bacteria that thing is carrying? But at least let her say goodbye. Kill him! I didn't kill anyone, sweetheart. I fed up a clock that was already ticking. All you had to do was bring this sack of meat outside and let that thing eat it. What is wrong with him? Where, wh was he the Marine? Like, why, why is this guy so freaking crazy? I don't understand. Like, I don't even get the motivations for why he's like that. From the little that we do see of him in the intro of the movie, it just seems so out of character, but oh well. So he continues his bad guy speech. I'm not gonna sit around here and watch you guys cry. I'm gonna do what needs to be done. I'm the one who makes the difficult decisions nobody else wants to make, because blah, 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 I'm a melon head, blah, blah, blah. What they say. You <laughs> Yes, it's true what they say. What? What were you gonna say? Say it before you die, bro. God damn it. I hate when people do that. I guess it's true what they say. What? What What was he gonna say? What's it gonna be? Uh, I guess it's true what they say. You now we'll never know. Now we'll never know. And that is the face of someone whose ass is getting ripped to shreds. Because you're an asshole. By the way, humor's not lost on me. Because of how easy it was for that freaking monster to... <laughs> to blast, to blast through all those freaking wood doors. Like, look at all the little barricades they put up. I'm telling you, the monster was just biding its time. It wasn't checking for weaknesses. The whole house was weak. It could have come through any time it wanted, and it was like, all right, I'm done playing games. I'm just gonna bust through. Look, look at those barricades. Look at, and, and, and dare, dare I say, it, these are still weak looking barricades, but they're better than what was on those windows. And that monster busted through them. Like literally, they're there one minute and then they're not the next. These look like paper, by the way. Look how skinny that, look at the one at the top flopping. They're paper or vinyl looking things because it's not what any bust through. And he's like, da 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 Like, <laughs> I have no words, but clearly I could see the barricades never worked. Anyway, this guy gets his just desserts and gets mauled. And this thing is eating him. This thing is eating him and everyone is watching. The monster the whole time is like, <laughs> you talk a lot, don't you boy? So while he's dying, he's a sacrifice. At least the thing didn't, you know, eat the other person. They go down the cellar while the thing is busy. They set the place on fire and the monster's like, oh no, I don't like this. I'm gonna human walk back to where I need to go. I don't even know who is responsible for closing the door. Why didn't it just go out through the the front door or the door it just burst out from I don't know. What's weird is that this creature who seems partly reptilian and mammalian and clearly humanoid but has scales has hair but also has hooves for feet. <laughs> Alyssa lights the fire. The monster's trapped inside the room I guess. The rest of them make their escape but when Vicky goes down there she sees her husband lying there and it's so sad because she goes up to him and she's like, oh, baby. And she tries to comfort him even though he's dead. And I honestly would have done the same thing. I would have done the same thing. Seeing him there, I would have wanted to hold him and cry over him and kiss him because it's the last time I'm ever going to see his face. And just seeing him lying there, loving him so much, I could not just walk away and not. Oh, my God. It was so depressing. It, it just definitely hits harder when you're with someone that you actually really love and you or if you even have dogs or kids I guess you know I don't have human children but it's 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 very sad and there was a denial there moment where she's like it's okay baby it's okay and I felt so bad for her because in that moment she just wants to comfort him he's gone he's long gone 
but her mind hasn't caught up to that yet. Mandy has to drag her. And by the way, yeah, my favorite character, Sean, the one who was sleeping around with the other girl's boyfriend, yeah, he died. And it's so freaking depressing and made me so angry, I don't even want to show it. And right as they get outside... Alyssa's out there waiting for them. Mandy stops. And there's a whole bunch of blood that starts showing up. And there's cracking noises. The thing is behind her and has impaled her from behind. Mandy finds Alyssa and she's like, let's run. Alyssa clearly is in better shape. And she's like, come on, Mandy, come. And Mandy's like, I can't. And then while Mandy is sitting there, this part made me mad. Mandy's sitting there and I'm like, Alyssa, just, just go. And I can't blame her. Mandy's like her sister. Mandy's also pregnant, but adrenaline. Adrenaline makes you run and not stop. Why is she sitting there? The monster is right on your heels. What are you doing? And Mandy starts seeing leaves fall and she's like, I guess I'm gonna die here. And the monster comes out from nowhere. The monster literally comes out from nowhere and guess who it attacks? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mandy. You got your friend killed. The one person who was a main character who we were rooting for, who was smarter than all the other people, so they said, and she's the one that gets killed. No wonder people rated this poorly. It was so dumb. Why is she the one that gets killed when you're the asshole that decided to sit there because your adrenaline system doesn't work? I thought this was a dream segment and she was having like a premonition or something, but no. Nope. She actually gets killed. Alyssa is dead. She's gone. She gets eaten by the monster because the monster just kills things and doesn't need to eat and maddie's there crying you know and then she's like oh my god and she's like so depressed because her best friend is dead oh now your legs work manny oh now they work thanks a lot you got your best friend killed i hope you have survivor's guilt i hope you do at least maddie's smart enough to put some mud on the blood areas of her body not like it does much because the thing can still send her like sense her running and moving she gets to the car takes the keys out of the gas area and she tries to start the car but I don't know what she's doing and she wastes her time and the monster breaks through the glass. After she narrows it, goes around again and goes back in the car, she finally puts it to drive and gets out there and ends up hitting the monster. Then she's like, let me reverse over this bitch. And then she leaves. You killed your friend. Good job. I'm supposed to be happy that she survived, but because of that stupidity that she pulled back there that got Alyssa killed, I, I'm so, I'm like, I don't even feel bad for her. I just, she shouldn't be here. She should not be here. She should not be alive. And then the movie ends with another monster, because I knew that there were more than one, coming up to this one and, like, crying and, like, oh, my God, what have they done? Good, that's what you get, dumbass. And the movie ends there because we know that there is now more than one of these things because I've always known there was more than one because the monster ended up in places it should have been as though it was teleporting. Funny how they didn't discover that later on, but whatever. We never find out what it is, and we don't need to. It's just a thing. Oh, this movie was a trip. This movie got me angry, but you know what? Some of the acting performances of some of the people wasn't so bad, but goodness gracious, the characters were stupid. I don't know why in a lot of these situations, they always have to end the movie with one person making it out. It would have been nicer if the two girls made it out, but of course, only one person has to make it out. Yep, only one, and it's usually the one person that doesn't deserve to live. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori, you ask. We answer.